All right, welcome everyone to Microsoft 365 Virtual Marathon. Thank you for attending and we hope you're having a, a great conference. I'd like to introduce Patrick Kohler. Patrick will be presenting a session titled How Microsoft Teams Completes Our VDI Environments. Okay, Patrick, you can take it away from here. Perfect, thank you very much for the great introduction and Good welcome night. everybody to today's session. Before I'm going to start to introduce myself, I'm going to describe a little bit, or, or I like to talk a little bit about uh, statistics. As you might know, we Germans love statistics. <laughs> First of all, let's have a look at the global usage of Microsoft Teams since its availability in March 2017. Teams arrived basically as the evolution of Skype for Business and supported 25 languages and already a bunch of features to call itself a platform of modern co collaboration. And um, yeah, like this, Teams hit the 20 million daily active mark. So we talk about 20 million daily active users in November 2019, which is already a great achievement for a product which will be the foundation of our future workplace, basically, at least from my opinion. After that time, the world had to face a global issue, a coronavirus also known as COVID-19. Countries had to close their borders, People had to work from home because only mandatory businesses are opened. That are the reasons why companies had to adapt their kind of working, no matter how far they are in progress of digital transformation, generally spoken. Especially for citizens of Luxembourg, for example, the country where I'm working at, uh, it was a huge change in the adoption and uh, they had to follow at a pace that wasn't expected, I guess for nobody in the world that was expected before. And um, to give you a short overview why I'm mentioning especially Luxembourg, because we can talk about um, Luxembourg has two, approximately 250,000 citizens. The same numbers increasing every day, nearly the same numbers increasing every day by their commuters. So you can imagine by the current situation how many people are used or need to be used to work from home. And this is really incredible, right? For that reason, Microsoft Teams had to be pushed a lot and it saved the productivity and the availability, first of all, of companies in Luxembourg and I'm sure of any other country in the world. When we see the numbers from March, and have a look at the current numbers uh, gathered from Microsoft in May 2020, we hit the 75 million daily active mark, which is really incredible. When we have a look at this, and just for a side note, when we talk about Microsoft Teams, nowadays we talk on the global spectrum uh, about 43% currently, which are still, of all companies, which are still using Office 2016 beside Microsoft Teams. Currently, 27% of all companies um, globally are already using Office 365 Pro Plus, but the trend is definitely increasing through the next years. To give you on the other side, before we directly jump into the topic, um, a short overview of the end user computing market currently. For the moment, when we have a look at the global VDI spectrum of, yeah, the global VDI spectrum, we see that North America is of course leading in terms of VDI usage. Especially the USA are really on top of the front um, for VDI utilization, followed by Europe when it comes to UK and Germany, which are nearly on the same level in the utilization of virtual desktop infrastructure products, as well as the Asian market leaded by Japan in this case. And when we see the rest of the world, um, we can see Brazil over here. But when we have a look Behind those values, we can quickly identify that a lot of customers who are using still on-premises computing resources over cloud resources, um, they will luckily de will be decreased. That means that cloud computing and cloud computing in terms of VDI will increase through the next years and through several public service, we could identify that there are already 35% of all asked customers who have currently on-premises VDI solutions, which are already in the adoption process to the cloud. I would give, just give you a short insight of all the competitors on the market. I just covered the biggest three. You will see VMware with its uh, horizon with a 30% market share, Citrix with a 45% market share, and last but not least, a on purpose, didn't wrote a vendor. It's the Microsoft RDS services most likely with a 9% market share and the rest is not mentioned over here. 
important to say, why didn't I put a logo or why didn't I reference Microsoft over here? Because when we see the value, how it will be the expected growth for the end of 2020, we will see that the Microsoft RDS services or Windows Virtual Desktop is increasing a lot. But now I, <laughs> I explain you why I didn't put the vendor name here. Because Windows Virtual Desktop, that is Microsoft's VDI desktop as a solution, uh, desktop as a service cloud solution in this case, provides also access or resources to the VMware computing or supports the Citrix computing side. And that's the reason why I didn't put a logo because it's so open in this case that you can even use your computing resources from Citrix or VMware size to get started with Windows Virtual Desktop. And I'm very happy today to speak in front of you. Very happy to present my topic today, how Microsoft Teams completes our VDI environments. We will generally check how to get Microsoft Teams running, especially for every VDI environment. But we will also have a focus on WVD, Windows Virtual Desktop, which offers besides Citrix the only supported way to run Microsoft Teams currently. Additionally, I will also show you which configuration needs to be taken to make it work in any kind of VDI environment and what you need to consider when rolling it out. My name is Patrick Köhler. I'm um, a yeah, technical leader for Azure at Elgon in Luxembourg. Elgon itself is a five times winning uh, Microsoft Country Partner of the Year, which I'm really proud of as well to work for such a great company, which supports me a lot on that phase. And yes, I've been awarded by Microsoft as well uh, this month for the Azure Hero Content Hero for my blog WVD Logics. You can go to wvdlogics.net to see my blog and the articles, which are most likely covering uh, topics around Windows Virtual Desktop, FS Logics, and the usage of Microsoft Teams especially. I would be happy to get in contact with you even after my presentation. But let's dive into the topic with some basic explanations for those of you who don't know Windows Virtual Desktop yet. When we talk about WVD, we talk about the best in class user experience we have for Windows 10 with multi-session support, which means we can run uh, the Azure owned Windows 10 multi-session image to have multiple people, multiple users connected to the same virtual machine at the same time and benefit really from those uh, benefits. The connectivity is basically possible from anywhere at any device. We even have native support for Samsung DeX, for example, to use your mobile device as a thin client, for example. Windows Virtual Desktop is optimized for the usage of Microsoft 365 Pro Plus, which actually means that you are able in a supported way to run the Office 365 suite nearly completely. I explain later why I say nearly. Additionally, it offers centralized management of session host and desktop provisioning since the 13th of April 2020, when the ARM based uh, management has been released. And customers with existing Microsoft 365 or Windows 10 enterprise licenses can use Windows Virtual Desktop at no cost. They only pay for the computing resources. That's maybe important to mention. If you want to know more about this, if you want to learn more about the licensing itself, I would like to reference you to my blog in this case. I wrote everything down quite in detail. And uh, yes, additionally, you can ask me even after the presentation. Let me quickly highlight the three big benefits from my opinion. One time we have the user experience management. That means we have one service to support our desktops and application experience on our tenant. It offers us flexibility due to a single host pool or multiple host pools like we, leave, like we want to deploy it and provide access to the desktop itself or the applications provisioned on that desktop. On top of that, we have access with synchronized identities to those resources. That means we can synchronize or we need to have our Active Directory server synchronized with our Azure ID to be able to access those resources in the cloud. The second point is basically the VM management. So we talk about a strong partner ecosystem. Microsoft is building up for this to support automated deployments. For example, the Nerdio manager for WVD. On the other hand, we also have disaster recovery with integrated Azure site recovery services, which enable us to have our VDI environment at high scale. At third point, I need to mention the WVD service management, especially when it comes to troubleshooting daily operations. It's quite important to say that we can benefit from integrated 
operations, integrated services to get started with our users, to support our users in their daily work without having the need of third party tools in this case. But there are already some uh, good third party tools in place, which I can already recommend, like the WVD admin from Nassel Moira, for example, highly recommended tool for every WVD admin user. The supported operating systems for WVD, before we dive into the topic Microsoft Teams, um, I want to explain you shortly what is possible, what operating systems are supported, and how does it look uh, from a component state before we jump into Microsoft Teams in this case. So the fully supported um, image or image version of Windows 10 is the Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session image, like I explained before with the benefits of the full support of Office 365. Additionally, you can run Windows 10 Enterprise Single Session or even Windows 7 if it's required for your environment. On top of that, you can also run uh, well-known Windows Server Operating Systems from 2012 R2 to 2019. Let me explain you a little bit how the Azure Component ecosystem is looking if we are not only focusing on WVD itself. After we've covered what WVD actually is, it should be important to understand also exactly those underlying components, as well as those which are not officially referenced, which show you exactly the power behind WVD when you use all the available Azure components. First of all, our WVD basic deployment consists of the following components, a subscription, of course, which is needed to deploy our resources, at least to Azure, a host pool, which hosts our computing power in terms of session hosts, application groups to grant access to specific applications on the desktop itself, and last but not least, a workspace to provide our end users an easy access to our provisioned resources in this case. Components which are not covered right now are something like the web access, diagnostic services, gateway, the management, or broker and load balancing services for the management itself, because they are covered by Microsoft. So they are completely managed and you don't need to take care of those services while provisioning Windows Virtual Desktop. To store our user or Office 365 profiles as well, as to provision applications with the new technology MSIX app attached, we need to provide a storage account for our deployment. So that means underneath our storage account, which can be a normal SMB share, but I highly recommend to go for Azure files with directory, Active Directory authentication to be able to use it at a larger scale, to be able to use identities from your on-premises environment to get started with it. For larger scale deployments, we're talking about something where the need is around four terabyte of storage. That means really enterprise uh, level. I highly recommend to go for Azure NetApp files in this case because you have a larger scale, you have larger scale possibilities to provide uh, storage for your end users. And of course, to keep the performance for your end users at an optimized level. Beneath our Azure files, Azure NetApp files, we see that we have our FSLogix profiles and the MSIX applications provisioned to be attached to our user sessions. More related to MSIX later. Last but not least, I was working a lot during the past weeks how to automate processes in WVD, how to get started with applications which aren't supported right now, like Microsoft Teams. And all of this can be done by multiple yeah, automation or management components. For a standard deployment, I highlighted two of them. One time, the automation account. The automation account provides access or possibilities to start and stop your virtual machines based on local machine metrics, such as the CPU utilization or other metrics, or based on the time, if you want to save the money. On the other hand, uh, I've been asked a lot of time how to get started with update management on Microsoft, uh, Microsoft's WBD service. And the, the answer is you can use a shared image gallery to update your image and to provide the latest image to your end users in this case. This is a very easy way to get started with update management. And when you see those components available, you already have a good component ecosystem without third party tools for the moment. 
Additionally, Microsoft offers a great way of managing golden images with the Azure Image Builder, which has been announced already. So you can also try this out to build your Azure images, virtual machine images from scratch with it. But this will not be topic of today's session. Well, we have a look at containerization for collaboration because we need to uh, work a little bit further to Microsoft Teams. You will see that I will mention the functionality of containerizing existing workloads for deploying applications or user profiles, additionally to offload caches from Microsoft Office products like OneDrive for Business or Microsoft Teams to a specific container on the SMB share on the storage account. The possibilities we have are, yeah, provided by FS Logix. After its acquiry in November 2018, FS Logix adds the following functionalities, as you can see here, to the Microsoft ecosystem. We have functionalities like Outlook caching, Windows search support, OneDrive for Business and even Files on Demand support, native SharePoint support and Windows Explorer, as well as the Office 365 Pro Plus computer activation license roaming, which is not required anymore because the license can be offloaded to that container. Scout for Business, GAL caching, OneNote caching, and of course, last but not least, Microsoft Teams support for virtual desktops. The reason why FS Logix supports OneDrive and Teams is the underlying technology. FS Logix apps are using advanced filter driver technology, which lets you and your operating system think that there's no redirection active to a persistent container the VHDX location, basically. And this approach makes it possible to use OneDrive and Teams because those applications are too sensitive for roaming profile solutions. You will see that later in a practical example of mine, why it is so important to mention FS logics in this case, and what happens actually if you don't respect the best practices. And um, yeah, I will show that later on. Let me quickly explain you in a graphical um, example how this, use, uh, how this works for an end user at the logon. You can see here at the right side screen, we have a user log on. And actually, when the user logs on and FS Logics application, the FS Logics apps have been provisioned to the golden image itself and configured via group policy or registry. The attachment process will occur at the log on side. That means the user logs on, and Windows does not directly create a user profile. FS Logics first searches at the location mentioned in our group policy or in the registry if there are VHD containers or VHDX containers available for us and attaches them on the fly at the user lock-on session, which gives us, of course, the possibility to have a very, very quick lock-on time and the possibility to run all our collaboration tools, which are so needed in today's times. I give you some bullet points when it comes to the user profile. What is important or what actually happens during the attachment process? So when we are logging in, like I mentioned before, the complete user profile will be attached at the login. No folder redirection is required and it would create a mess if you want to go for it. The configuration can be done directly on the golden image via registry, can also be done later on via GPO. For Companies or enterprises, I highly suggest to go for the GPO way, even because the management is more centralized in this case, and it's easier to do the change management. But to run Microsoft Teams in a very performant way, it's required to use exclusions. And this is something like uh, the exclusions from uh, folder redirections, for example. We have the possibility to reduce the profile size significantly. So we are talking about 85% just because we respect one or three points in the exclusion of Microsoft Teams folders. Especially the caching and the offloading of the cache are producing a lot of yeah, st a high storage amount. And that means that we have, we're at the first lock-on, I'm only talking about the first lock-in of a user session, we can have a user profile around four gigabyte per session. And this is far too much, but I have an easy solution to go and to let you run Microsoft Teams a performant way. When it comes to the Office 365 profile, I have to say that, like mentioned before, that it's first of all doing the offloading of Office 365 cache data. At the other hand, we have the user licensing redirection, which is possible. All of these options can be turned on via GPO. We have Microsoft Teams and OneDrive cache possibilities, as well as the support of the Outlook OST file, which can be redirected or attached 
to those containers directly. Now that we've talked about yeah, the possibilities FS Logics provides to us. We have, on the other hand, the possibility to use MSIX App Attach, which is currently not directly implemented. You need to have the preview build of Windows 10 to get started with it, but I'm sure it will be released quite soon for all of us to get tested in the real Windows Virtual Desktop or native image, like I want to describe it. On this picture, lent by Microsoft in this case, you we compare traditional personal desktop deployments with the MSIX approach, let's say. On the left side, you see we prepare normally our golden image. Our golden image, which is represented by multiple VMs, maybe for different users, uh, provides access to the applications which are pre-installed, provides access or provides uh, optimizations we already did on the machine, as well as the user profile, which is attached, of course, at the lock-on level. Compared to MSIX with the capabilities FS Logic Springs. We see that we have our golden image, maybe prepared with all our, of our favorite applications new, needed for our daily business. And the user profile will be attached, like mentioned before, at the user lock-on level in form of a BHDX file. Common applications can now be virtualized and containerized as well, and will be attached at the next layer, which gives us the possibility as well to have our favorite applications attached at a user session level on the fly. That doesn't require any special configuration except the packaging of our, our favorite applications. Windows Store applications as well as your self-developed applications are supported in this case to get started with it. If you want to learn more about MSIX App Attach and especially how I managed to get started with Microsoft Teams on MSIX App Attach, please feel free to reach out to me to explain that a little bit more in depth because we are short at time and I really want to show you something in my practical demonstration right afterwards. And now, finally, let's talk about the challenge Microsoft Teams in VDI environments. Let me quickly explain you what were the most challenges till now to get Microsoft Teams started in virtual desktop environments. First of all, the update management. As we know, Microsoft is frequently working on Microsoft Teams. Updates will be released frequently and the possibility to always use the latest version will produce a lot of caching, a lot of um, yeah, large roaming or user profiles in our environments. Second problem was the support for operating systems and hypervisors when we talk about VDI environments because officially there was only a support for Citrix till Windows Virtual Desktop arrived. The third point, even while using it, Nowadays, with FS Logix in any kind of virtualization environment, we see that the profile is flooded quite quickly. And I will show you a good example right afterwards um, how this looks like, as well as the temporary storage capacity, which needs to be provided to be able to um, yeah, operate with Microsoft Teams. Last but not least, it was also a huge uh, problem while using the webcam itself is the hardware redirection and the functionality to use all the pericle um, devices to get started like we are using it, uh, like we are used to Microsoft Teams. Let us have a quick look at the client requirements before we jump into the installation possibilities and when I give you the best practices. These are the requirements by Microsoft if we want to get started with Microsoft Teams. We can see the requirements for a standard desktop is that we have two CPUs, four gigabyte of RAM per machine, as well as eight gigabyte of storage. It's a bit optimistic, but these are the recommendations. When we have a look at the requirements for server deployments, when we are talking about VDI environments, I include the Windows 10 multi-session with it. We have to use four, six, eight, depending on our computing size needed. It can be even more VCPUs. 512 to one gigabyte per user approximately to run it in a very good performance and good operable way, as well as four gigabyte per user without any optimization. It's also quite optimistic because I will show you afterwards with some uh, small implementations how you can get started at a very, very a small scale and you don't need to have four gigabyte reserve per user. Therefore, I mentioned four gigabyte per user without any kind of optimization. But how do I deploy Microsoft Teams right now? We have multiple ways of doing it. I just 
provided you some opportunities over here. Of course, we have also some automated ways. I just cover the per machine installation, which stores the team's installation package locally on the golden image. It provides you update management capabilities because you as the administrator are required to do the update management for your users. And it doesn't flood the user profile because we'll be installed on the local hard drive instead of copying all the files and binaries to the user's profile, which provides also better performance for shared systems in the end. The per user installation, which can be required for local desktops to be used, provides better performance in local installations. That means really on a local device, which will not roam, where you don't have roaming users. But that's also on the same thing, the same disadvantage it installs teams directly to the user's profile, which makes it harder for administrators to manage it carefully. On the other hand, we also have the Office Deployment Tool. That means we have the possibility to deploy Microsoft Teams directly with our Office 365 Pro Plus deployment over, yeah, with the Office Deployment Tool or over SCCM with a deployment package. So we have multiple ways of deploying it. These are the options available to us now. But let's get started with WVD especially and how to install it once we downloaded Microsoft Teams as a per machine installer. I will give you access to all of the links to these slides as well after the presentation that you have the possibility to review this. The installation, like I mentioned before, occurs on the local hard drive beneath C program files, Microsoft Teams. But for WVD currently, we need to enable a registry key for on our golden image to identify that we are talking about a VDI environment to be able to install the per machine installer. And other environments like VMware Horizon or the Citrix uh, environments, I already identified that we don't need to do this because it automatically identifies it. For WVD for the moment, we need to do this. While installing Teams, we will do it with the MSI exec command slash I for install, we reference the exit file and we define a parameter to define for whom or how we want to install it. And now some of you might already know two possibilities, the all user parameter and the all users parameter. Like I mentioned here, use all user equals one for VDI environments, all users equal one for yeah, local systems in this case. And here I show you the installation impact. Like I mentioned before, what happens if you don't have some optimizations in place? You see on top of that, if we install Microsoft Teams per machine, if we do the optimization I will show you right after, we will have a user profile of around 300 megabyte after the first lockdown. Of course, Office 365 is already providing some caches, is already some offloading something. That means that we have an additional container of around 550 megabytes. But if you don't do any kind of optimization and you run Microsoft Teams in a per user state, you can see at the lower picture that we have a user profile of four gigabyte directly, which is very, very huge in this case. If you imagine you need to do this for all of your end users. Finally, to get started with Microsoft Teams, it's quite important to say that it is possible to use the webcam. It is possible to get started with uh, yeah, the audio redirection. You have already nowadays some uh, options directly from the Azure portal, what I will show you right after in the practical demonstration. But there are some options not available yet, like the camera redirection, which still needs to be enabled via PowerShell. Like I said before, I will share the commandlets with you right afterwards, but this screen already shows you that you can do it with two lines of commands to enable also the camera redirection. And as expected and as tested a few days ago, you can run uh, teams properly with any kind of effects with your camera and from my personal feeling also with a good performance. But that's maybe your next question. How does it work with performance? Microsoft listened to the community and a lot of people complained uh, due to the previous version of WVD about the performance of Microsoft Teams. For this reason, Microsoft will announce or has announced uh, the feature audio video redirect, which should be available in June 2020. So hopefully only one month left to wait for us. An AV redirect provides a possibility to have basically a client to client end connection. That means we don't have a special connection that our device needs to calculate. Our device needs to provide a lot of computing power because 
the host VM will send the package immediately to the other host VM. So we have a kind of encrypted end to end encryption in this case. But now I've talked a lot about uh, things about theoretical stuff about WVD and so on. And now I really want to use the time left to show you something practical over here. And I want to share my screen with you to get started with some yeah, tips and how I get started with, uh, yeah, with Microsoft Teams in a virtualized environment. Right now, you should be able to see my screen over here and I will quickly show you my environment currently that you have an idea of what I've created already. Like I mentioned before, these are the objects available to your users when you deploy WVD on the Azure. And I've created a single host pool in this case, um, which includes two session hosts. I already started one to present you how this works actually. And we have several application groups to provide our users access to all of our favorite applications. You see, we have something like desktop group provisioned, Visual Studio Code for our developers, as well as Microsoft Office in this case for all of the users, including Teams. Like I mentioned before, three application groups and everything is consolidated in one workspace available to our end users. On the other hand, I will connect to a virtual machine to show you what we have from the authentication side. We have a single Active Directory con a domain controller, which is synchronizing our identities from the on-premises world to the Azure AD. We have multiple users in place. Every VM has been provide provisioned by automation in this case, by virtual machine scale set. And we are using a storage account. We'll quickly open it for you. We use a storage account on Azure directly to host our user profiles, like mentioned before. One speciality in this case is that I've configured um, yeah, Active Directory authentication with our storage account to be able to control the access for my end users to those locations. And how to grant access? This is quite quickly done. Microsoft provision already a good documentation on this, but one point which is not very clear for a lot of customers of mine is how to start to grant access. And it's quite simple. I always suggest to add those network locations one time to your local explorer at the administration client, for example, you perform a right click, click on properties. And like we want to do it with normal NTFS permissions, you can do this over here, click on edit and click on add. When the storage account has been successfully added to your domain following the documentation, you should see in a few seconds the possibility to add user access to the location. Very important to mention at this stage is also that when you create the storage account that you need to grant a role-based access for your storage account as well, because you need to provide contributor access that somebody is able to write and to read the file because we are, using about, uh, we are talking about synchronized identities. Over here, I can enter a new username grant the permissions, like you can see it here. This is a security group from my domain, which can basically do anything and has access to that storage account, which is called FSLogix Profits. Like mentioned before, you see the user profile of Scott, of one of our users. He's using WVD with Microsoft Teams already for a longer term, as well as his old profile, which I kept for you to really show you what is the current size, which is really, really, really high for the moment. All right, let's get started and perform a Teams installation itself. That means I prepared already in my tenant a demo machine for you to show you how this is working. Copy the IP address and connect from my jump host over here to perform a Microsoft Teams installation with you together. Will probably take a few seconds in this case. Before we can jump ahead, I maybe show you first on our domain controller which kind of optimizations we've performed because the machine is currently still in a starting state. Like mentioned before, I'm working with crew policies because I always recommend to go for it to have a better management. That's obvious, I guess. 
when we click on the crew policy object for my small environment, I just have one small crew policy object in place. But to show you a little bit, where are the always recommended ways of doing it from my side? First of all, when we talk about the profile container, we have the possibility to allow concurrent sessions. We have the possibility to say we delete the local profile when the FS logics profile should apply. Something that is really recommended is the dynamic VHDX allocation to be able to grow and to not reserve the full storage directly at the beginning. But this is also a standard value enabled. And of course, the VHD location, you can see it over here. This is represented by my storage account. And the big advantage is that only people with access to it means access like I granted it before over the Windows Explorer, for example, can access this location. I prevent login with a temporary profile to prevent users to log on, which have errors, mistakes to identify this quicker, to be able to adapt much quicker in this case. And we have the most important feature to get started with Microsoft Teams is to provide a redirection XML file to customize the redirection and to not store local team Teams cache files on our user profile. And to do so, I reference the folder on my syswall in scripts, WVD, and the XML file will be attached or let's say applied automatically. Let me show you what is included in such a file. How did I create it? Besides, if you want to go for it after the presentation, I will provide you with all resources later on on my homepage. I provided it at this location, you see the redirections.xml, and when we have a look at it, I simply excluded four folders which are normally stored in the app data roaming folder for Microsoft Teams. First of all, it's a service worker. We have the Microsoft Teams cache, log files, and the media stack files, which are blowing the user profile quite a lot. And even optimization tools, which are available on the market for free or scripts, uh, when I use the optimized VHD uh, possibility via PowerShell, I was not able to shrink it and to work so efficiently with Microsoft Teams than working with the redirections file. Let me quickly check if our virtual machine is started right now. I will try to connect to it. And this works. I connect to my local image. on the machine over here. This is a golden image. This is yeah, quite prepared already. And the only thing left is basically Microsoft Teams on that image. You see, I have prepared also the FS Logics profiles and Office 365 components already, except Microsoft Teams. But everything is already downloaded over here for you, for us to get started with the installation itself. Basically, this is our virtual machine over here. We can see some applications are pre-prepared. Some of them are not staged because the start menu hasn't been configured yet. And there's no Microsoft Teams on the machine directly, as you can see here from the start menu. I've already downloaded it to the downloads folder. But maybe I should quickly go for it again. So I download the MSI installer directly from the website of Microsoft right now. Maybe it's better to start really from scratch. I use the new Edge Chromium. And download Microsoft Teams as an MSI deployment directly from the web page. Seems that we have some problems over here, but it's not a problem. I will directly jump over to a secondly prepared machine already to show you how this looks like. Excuse me for not showing this demonstration, but I will cover it, of course, in the next time.
now that we are thinking that, or that we have teams prepared, I will show you that on a real virtual desktop session host. I can see while opening the remote desktop app that, I, that it's provided access to all of the applications and even the virtual desktop for my end users. In this case, I'm using my user Scott or user called William in this case, which is able to connect to those environments. And let me quickly start the desktop for you. We need to authenticate over here and you will see that our image will be attached right now to the user session. So that's the first time we log on with this user. The user profile will be created. And what's the most important for me is to show you if the user profile is still increasing or not with the implementations we performed earlier. And here I can also show you what is the result of installing it, like mentioned before in the presentation. You can see for a first time a user logs on, that was already quite a good performance. I didn't choose a big performance uh, on the computing, on the resource side. It's really a basic deployment we have over here. And Microsoft Teams is starting. And this is actually the process where user profits already start to increase a lot. And if I go quickly back to my computer where I can see the storage account, I see I see that there is a user profile created for my user Williams with a low scale. And it's not increasing right now, like we saw it in the other example, where Teams is increasing a lot by four gigabyte only for the first log on. And that's really incredible what we can do only with the, the redirections XML file to be able to get started with Microsoft Teams, to be able to run it operational and performant. Let me quickly show you on the local hard drive that we installed machine it in a per machine installation. That means we go to program files, Microsoft, and you see it here, over here. And these are the possibilities given here. Before we jump over to the next point, it's also important how to get started with um, with the camera redirection, because some of you are asking how this is actually working. We quickly connect to our Azure account for this. You need to have an administrative right to your WBD instance in this case. I log on with my credentials. And I'm able to retrieve the modules for my desktop deployment by doing this and get our host pools and can open the information right over here. By doing right. Table name RDP properties. So you see, everything is empty right now. If we wanna get started, we have a lot of possibilities to do so. For my case, I only want to activate the camera redirection, which will be done by the capturing parameter and audio capturing mode over here and the audio mode. And I can even select the camera redirect and select specific devices to be redirected. Or I can like in my case for this demonstration purpose to allow any camera to be redirected in this case. Last but not least, I can go and update my host pool with the custom RDP property we defined over here, and we are able to get started and to apply those settings. In this case, I quickly need to adapt something.
and get started with the settings which are successfully applied to our environment. If you want to know more about the RDP settings available for you, because there are quite a bunch more, you can go to the this link. I will provide it to you later on, which gives you a bunch of settings you can define for your host pool. But this is not part of our demonstration for today. I hope that the tips, and even though we had some problems in the practical demonstration, helped you a little bit to get insights how to perform an installation or how to have an idea what needs to be taken for an installation to get started with Microsoft Teams. And I quickly want to say something. For this reason, I will quickly jump over to my presentation again to show you and address some more points. Because I released quick uh, currently this weekend a new timeline feature. A lot of people are asking what features are coming next to WVD, Azure, or Office 365. And I really want to give you the opportunity to always stay up to date, to give you the possibility to get detailed status information, not only related to what Microsoft is presenting on the roadmap directly. And for me, it's important to have a consolidated space for everything around WVD, FS Logics. Teams and Azure. And for this reason, I started this timeline feature to keep you updated as well on new functionalities. Other recommended sources, resources about WVD are, of course, the documentation for the new spring release to be able to get started with deployments of WVD. Another good blog is from Christian Brinkhoff. He describes everything in detail. I can't say it any better, let's say. Marcel Moller's blog, especially for the WVD admin tool to get started with the administration, as well as a community where I'm also a member at the WVD community. I'm really proud to be part and to share with this community, and we see it's really increasing a lot. Um, yeah, I'm really proud to be part of it. Thank you very much to attend to my session today, and let's start our cloud journey together from today. I would be happy to connect with you and to discuss about you uh, with you about the topics we've discussed today in the future. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for the uh, also to the organizers and for everybody participating to today's session. Thank you very much.